Hello and welcome back. We are here playing Victoria 3 as Armenia. We've grown quite large. Last episode we did break free from the Russian market and broke up the Caucasus a little bit. We will be looking to Diplo integrate these guys over the next kind of 30-ish years that we have remaining in the game. The main objective of the run still remains perfectly balancing our interest groups as they should be. And to do this we are trying to kind of massage the laws and get it so that we have five interest groups that are powerful and all happy with us and also have uh the armed forces still not marginalized so this is going to require razor thin margins because in order to have five interest groups powerful you need to use up a hundred percent of your air clout and then once they are powerful they can decay two percent before they become not powerful so you'll be using 90 percent of your clout and in order to not be marginalized you will be using five percent of your clout so we will only have wiggle room of five percent of clout I'm not sure to what degree this is achievable. We're trying to do it with the best interest groups possible, which I think are rural folk, industrialists, petite bourgeoisie, intelligentsia, trade unions. It would be easier if we were willing to use the armed forces uh, because they are kind of have a lot more clout, uh, but we are trying to do it without this. And so let's get off and away and try and see if we can do this. I think we have had a balance of four already uh, earlier on. Um, and we have a little screen of that. But, uh, five is, uh, maybe too much to handle. Um, we did complete the Suez survey. So I'm gonna want to, uh, do some of this action. It should, I think the Suez, or both the canals, should start out automatically subsidized. Because there's no, really no reason you would want to build it. Yeah, we will build it. Um... The, we also are own Panama, so we can build the Panama Canal relatively easily. Um, did have a little bit of growing pains last episode. I think our economy was a little bit bumpy. Yeah, because when we got ejected from the market, there was significantly decreased demands for our consumer goods. And so maybe we want to be trying to export those a little bit more, but I think we want to be doing it in a more targeted way where we are trying to pull people in our market. No, don't do that. Dagestan, please. Uh, okay, so what we will do is we will declare neutrality on this Ecuador one. And I think we're still pretty infamous, so we don't want to really be too naughty, but we do want to help Dagestan. Um, so we will maybe declare war. Can we integrate anyone? I don't think so. Coloniz we're going to turn off the colonization soon, because there's not much left to colonize. We are trying to get Argentina into our market. They're part of the Brazilian market. They're part of the Russian market. We are bankrolling them. We're bankrolling a whole ton of people now because uh, we are trying to eventually incorporate them into our market. I think before we signed off, we did double check all of them. So we're not gonna double check now, but we will be trying to get obligations, use those obligations to both absolve, to make them friendly, and then use the obligations to invite them to the customs union if you see the Caucasians are pretty close to accepting. We're also still bankrolling Georgia, because I think they're going to be the first one we try and make it to a protectorate. Uh, we have to not have a truce, though, and not be infamous, but then we would be able to do it. Alright, we're gonna... Well... Let's take a look at their politics. They have monarchy, traditionalism. Ugh. How about these guys? Monarchy, autocracy, agrarianism, censorship. So these guys are better. Maybe we just let... We just hope we don't get the, the two-state solution. We don't like that, but we, would, we do like the politics of the second guy more. So... Maybe I'm overthinking that. go that should be pretty good we did expand some industries not in the capital we kind of want to turn off uh our encouraging manufacturing in the capital but that will kind of <laughs> this is a big driver of our economy so i don't think we can uh but to recoup the authority i think we will actually use that excess authority uh to tax porcelain and we're uh 
probably can build up more. Now, important to emphasize, you always have to add this number to your investment pool to think about how much you're really making. Mm, let's take this one, because I really want to pass Outlaw Descent again. But we can switch off and go censorship instead if we absolutely need to. And I think we can finally expand construction a bit. We've kind of been a little bit slow on that front. Not a whole, whole lot, but just a little bit. We are taking care of the infrastructure problems. Masara should get oil sometime soonish. Maybe we want to integrate Baghdad. It's gonna take 20 years. We do have a lot of infrastructure here. Decent amount of arable land, although the arable land is not really a bonus nor a hindrance to why we wanted to integrate them. Um, I suppose it's kind of a bonus. Generally speaking, so the arable land will increase the overall number of people who can migrate there, but then it also increases the amount of agriculture you could have and the agriculture throughput bonus you can have, which would be further emphasized by, or not emphasized, improved by the colonial exploitation throughput bonus. I'm not sure exactly how I think about that. Could annex Egypt. It's not too, too much infamy. I mean, maybe if it doesn't take us under up uh, over 50, we want to do that. And it doesn't. So this will be a pretty big deal in terms of... Uh, let's do it. I don't think we'll need to mobilize all. Let's take a look, though. Oh, you have 74 battalions? You're minus 75, fearful. Because you have nothing mobilized yet. Yeah, fair enough. Mobilize this guy and put him on this front. And this guy and put him on the other front. Gotta love our cocaine addicts. We, of course, have uh, the psychoanalyst... Or psychoanalysis guy. Who we got, who's not Freud, because we're not in Austria, I guess. But he is, uh, he starts off with ambitious, charismatic cocaine addict, and he now has political operator and syphilis. I wonder if the two are related. I mean, but if he's Freud, the two probably are related. If you know what I mean. Um. I do think we don't really have much unemployment or peasants anywhere. Uh, a little bit of unemployment here. So I guess we could add a new industry here. We could also just, you know, increase this a little bit. Start moving towards a larger throughput bonus. And then... Try to think of businesses I only have one of. And that one is in the capital that maybe I would want more of. I guess clothing is always a really solid bet, though. Um, don't have clothing here, so... We'll just 51 it, and they'll figure it out. We'll need a couple of those. We don't have an enormous amount of construction anyways. We're trying to get Syria in. They don't want to come in. Uh, Ottomans are now cooperative, so we could probably get them into the trade union sometime soon. Looks like they're not quite minus 50. Minus 50 is the target, of course. And the reason why... Egypt, Great Britain, why do you do this? So, Great Britain has now joined. So this actually might be a difficult war. We're going to mobilize all the generals. And we're going to start distributing them to the two fronts that we have. We're going to cry ourselves a river. Poor syphilitic guy. It do be like that sometimes. And then we will raid convoys, I think. With both. Maybe we use this guy for a naval invasion on Egypt. I think we have a much better navy than them. Yeah, they don't have the flotillas, my guy. 
We will build the canal. Um, so I suppose a broader question might be, do we want to demand anything from Great Britain? I don't think we can really, I don't think we can land Great Britain. Telefono exchange. I guess I'm fine having better relations with them. Um, but do we want anything from, wow, Great Britain's weak. Only 740 on the, uh, flotillas. So we should probably even land the home countries, right? I think. So what can we debate? Well, so first of all, we can have them release the British Raj, uh, which is a solid go-to. Well, let's see how much infamy we have to work with. We want to stay under 50, so we have 6.7 infamy to work with. And we cannot sway anyone to our side, and we do have to worry about Prussia or Austria or France joining, so we cannot generate any more infamy. This is, by the way, one of the downsides of being infamous, just in general, is Great Britain probably doesn't join if we're under 25. Um, but okay. We could transfer a subject, but we can't really transfer a whole, whole lot. And so we would want to think of it in terms of, is there a place that we know of that has a lot of oil? Or also, uh, just a way to, we could just want to gimp the, gimp them. So we're probably t gonna try and take war reps off them. I guess is the one productive thing. Um, and then after that, we could liberate some countries. Oh, we could liberate Zulu. This actually would be decent. But we would also... We could tr uh, no, this would kick us over 51. I Would it? 6.4. It would not kick us over 51. We would get an adjacency with Zulu. We could maybe annex Zulu to look to get this little stretch of land. I don't think that's particularly worth it. Um, but liberating the British Raj and trying to eventually get them into our market is a good look, I think. I also do think we will want to expand the military. Almost clicked back down by accident. So, let's... But we don't have an interest in... I think we need to have an interest in there. In order to do this. So let's do that. We should get the interest before we run out of time. And let's add uh, war reps from the British. And I think we will also want to... Maybe add some conscripts. Now we know that in cars, we did have. Some excess people. Oh, we did not switch over to trench. That's a little bit of a sad moment. Um, could switch over now. That will, I think the malice is not worth it though. Um, let's see how worried are they. So this war probably pops off with just a minus 32. Uh, because it is an existential war for Egypt. We will liberate, look to liberate the British Raj once we get an interest in the region. Which will significantly gimp them. And also, if we can get the British Raj in our market, we can siphon off a lot of pops from them. One bad thing about being outside of Russia's market, in addition to not being adjacent to Great Xing as far as trade goes, is we cannot siphon off pops from their market um, anymore. Alright, so our interests get activated. Now we should be able to... I don't think it checks what the interest... Yeah, it doesn't check what the interest was at the start of the play, which probably should be the case to avoid you being able to do this. But if we liberate the British Raj, and if I'm not mistaken, Baroda, that cuts off all the internal ones from the... Uh, so all these little internal countries, if you take Baroda and you take the British Raj out, then they'll all be cut out. So this is kind of the, these pair of things will 
do quite a lot for uh, messing them up. And then we could, of course, transfer subjects. I don't think I want to. I don't think Zulu is worth it. A... Where is Kutch? I mean, Kutch would give me an adjacency to, like, a lot of this stuff. And it would give me an adjacency to the British Raj, and it was only 2.5. And what is your diplomatic relation? You're a puppet. So I think I actually like transferring Kutch here. This is only 2.5, and I'm mainly doing it so that my market is now adjacent to the British Raj, which makes it easier to pull them in. And so we will do transfer subject Kutch. And so we're not concerned with the territory of Kutch itself, as much as we just want to have... Kutch will be in our market, which will make them adjacent to the British Raj. So... And if this war doesn't pop off, we didn't incur too, too much infamy putting that war goal in. Probably gonna break them up a little bit more, but just, let's just wait and see if someone gets swayed here. Um, we would probably want to take Kutch no matter what. We are making quite a bit of money, but we are draining this quite fast, so we're only running a surplus of 100k. And I do want to get kind of below 50% uh, credit, so I'd want to get down to 51 million here. I don't think anyone else is coming in, so let's see what else we can do. We can liberate uh, Mysore, because Mysore does have an adjacency to the coast. So let's liberate Mysore. And, I mean... No, we can't afford any of this business, I don't think. Although, let's see. Taking South Cameroon would be a pretty big game. I don't think... Yeah, it's not worth the infamy, but it would cut off their internal thing. I think it'd be more valuable to take, like, the U.S.'s, like, Gabon and uh, Congo to cut all of this off. Uh, which leaves us kind of not with too much. We don't want a regime change that takes a ton of infamy. We could open their market. Ah, this is fine, I suppose. And, uh, I suppose we could have tried to liberate New South Wales, but this is fine. We'll just hold on to, we won't, hmm. We'll, re we'll let the rest implode, I think. I don't think we need another, to put a hand in this anymore. We will use these guys to try and land Egypt. Uh, probably, maybe Middle Egypt? Uh, probably up here in Lower Egypt. Tax avoidance is deactivated. Hot damn. Thank you. Yeah, we are trying to... So, I don't think we can swing it, but we kind of want to go back towards oligarchy. But the problem is, is going this way will radicalize everyone. Um... Well, I guess that it's not as radical anymore. It does deactivate a lot of really good bonuses, but I think that to try and get this five IG balance thing, it might be a really good thing to do. Do you back down here? Hopefully not. The size of our loans are very nice here in forcing wars through, despite us being very strong relatively. It says it's likely to back down, but this is an existential war for Egypt, so they're much less likely to back down. If we were just taking one province, they would probably back down. But since we're taking all the provinces, they probably won't. This will increase radicalism by quite a bit, integrating all this territory, but I think long-term is kind of where we want to be. Yeah, it does break out, and we will get our landings going. So we will look to land in Lower Egypt with someone small. we took from this front freedom of thought completed that's fantastic as we are about to outlaw descent take the university but triggers open arms so we can get permanent migration attraction which is really really strong modifier and then now we will outlaw the descent
Come on, please tick here. Just give me the outlaw descent right after we get teaming shores. That's the cream de la cream. No, we don't get it. Okay, fair enough. Insulting drawing, you're telling me. Uh, yeah, let's condemn that rude drawing. Obviously. And we are going to want to do a landing in the home countries as well, I think. Just not quite yet. I wonder how much Great Britain is committed to these fronts. Looks like nothing to that front. And, uh, nothing to that front. Are you pushing on, like, a front we have with you somewhere? Like, over here? No? Huh. Wonder where they're at. Austria is importing clothes. This is fantastic for us. We are not using convoys, and we just generally kind of want to export that stuff. We would like to get a... Not a rivalry. Trade pact. Trade agreement. Why can't we? We have to be above poor. Fair enough. Let's take a quick look at all of our obligationies. So now we can invite the Caucasus to the, our trade union, and we will stop bankrolling them. Now we can invite Argentina, or we can't invite Argentina, we can't invite them. Uh, you are above poor, so we will start bankrolling you instead of improving relations and hope you get off of belligerent. We just want to be friends. I know we declared war on you and opened your market, but we really just want to be friends. We're now cordial with Chile, so let's stop improving relations. Hanoverian proletariat revolt wants to sway us against Austria? I don't know, you're barking up the wrong tree, my guy. How are we doing in this battle? Not good. Well, it's not how we drew it up. This is how we drew it up. Yeah, we really should have swapped to... Uh, we got to remember after this war to swatch up, swap over the trench infantry, which will make a pretty big difference. Don't like getting rivaled. Quick obligation from the Japanese shogunate is very nice because we're just gonna absolve it. We really want to get them into our market because they have a really large population of pops we can siphon off with a low standard of living. So this makes it very easy for us to grow our pop by uh, doing that. people importing stuff from us which will stimulate the economy and we won't have to why are hmm. do you have a shortage of small arms the problem is is the jobs here are so profitable that they don't want to do this we can't subsidize it i suppose we could do this this would make more small arms don't use that much oil let's do it normally i don't like using this pm but oil is really cheap in our market uh, which is the first time that I've ever experienced it ever because we were like slowly growing and we also like we also nabbed the Trugal States uh, pretty early on which uh, is nice or the Trugal Coast which is Bahrain and the Trugal States and they've kind of just overall expanded oil in this game so it's not as catastrophically hard to get uh, we we're pushing kind of slow I think our yeah our naval landing did not work let's try naval doing here and we'll do this guy again yeah maybe there's too many uh in here too many too high conscription center level almost pushed egypt out completely over here should be quite nice there are kurdistan's in our market which is nice as well we're making relations worth with Gal Galadi. I think we wanted to, uh, we get one of our first, uh, 
mass migrations to Azernum. Which is very nice. Yeah, we did add a whole bunch of open jobs. We could go assembly lines. I mean, I'm kind of tempted. We have a lot of oil. Let's just go assembly lines on all those. And we don't want to turn on. Yeah, we're not going to turn up. Uh, some of the more expensive PMs in terms of inputs in unincorporated territory. Let's do it. I mean, we can turn it back once oil gets really expensive. We did want that bifurcated in the in terms of patronage or whatever. Why are we decaying so fast? We get minus 4.44 due to exhaustion. They get minus a lot more. A lot because of occupation. We do want to make sure we land. Uh... Great Britain. Although I don't think they're really contributing much to this, so. Let's send our biggest boy over there, which of course hurts this front quite a bit, so we will move our big boy over from here once this battle's over. Really wish you could queue moving an army, <sighs> but you can't. Um, this is kind of a mechanic that should be the case, but it's not. Because you just have to wait. We are more than happy to have a trade agreement with Austria. We will just put this guy manually on this front now that we have failed twice. And we will just raid convoys here, I guess. Maybe out here. Let's just do it there. The 16er should finish off Egypt over there. Well, the 44 goes over here. We'll be pushing two fronts at once. I hope we can land the home countries and actually enforce, but I'm somewhat skeptical. Um, but getting the British Raj out of their market would be huge. We can also try and clean up the borders over here. You know, by taking the East Borneo, but really not very important. What's important is trying to get our IGs sorted, I guess. But a big part of that is we have to pass outlaw descent because we currently don't have enough authority to really do too much. Uh, we're going to have to take the Liberal Party out of government and suppress them. We are bolstering the trade unionists. We want to keep them happy or above board. And uh, this throughput bonus is really big. So is the workforce ratio. Not getting the workforce ratio right now. Hopefully we get it again soon. Although... They're not going to be pleased with us trying to do this. Trying to move back up the ladder. Ooh, our armed forces guy, I think, who supported this? No, no, he still supports it. Interesting that he doesn't support census suffrage. He has, uh... What is it? The vanguardist ideology, which... does make him support oligarchy and autocracy. So he should... Oh, he opposes universal suffrage and anarchy, which strongly opposes censor suffrage, wealth voting, and land voting. Yeah, so a little bit hard for us to try and move back up the ladder here. We should have gone to oligarchy early on and just stuck on it, but uh, I think maybe not. Uh, problem is, is with oligarchy, it's hard to get the rural folk powerful, I think, and we need to get the rural folk more powerful. It's very difficult to uh, it's very difficult to have simultaneously powerful rural folk and industrialists. I'm finding with this run, um, especially late game, when the industrialists tend to fall off a little. I've been trying to think of how to do it, but 
it's tough. I think what's most efficient or smart is to try and make the intelligentsia, trade unions, and industrialists all powerful and ignore and suppress the other ones. I think I forgot to subsidize. No, I didn't. Really should be automatically subsidized. Oh my god, I've been paused. This whole time, I'm like, man, it feels like nothing's happening. You don't say. Yeah, boy lists. Doing pretty good on these fronts. Would really like to get this through. There's a really high stall chance, because a lot of people in the government don't like it, so... You know, it's hard for uh, it to do well. Yep. I think we'll take the bureaucracy hit, because we have a ton of excess bureaucracy now. Prussia and France are fighting. Interesting. Can't. I think Austria has German leadership, but... Or did Prussia take it back from them? Mom and dad have been fighting. We don't like it. <clears throat> Actually, we kind of don't care, but it's funnier when we don't like it. Let's kick you on auto expand. You are auto expanding. Also, auto expanding. Almost certainly that's auto expanding. That is two. Could decide what we want to specialize in here. They're not very well employed, so we could actually just... So that one is well employed. These are not, so we're not firing very many people by getting rid of them, although we could, in theory, choose cows. But I think we'll just go with tea here. Could go with cotton, but it's much easier just to go with the tea. And the reason why we deleted some and rebuilt some is because we are looking to get the maximum throughput bonus from economies of scale. And so this is a way to do it. Probably not maximally efficient. We should probably be building up only before we start deleting and rebuilding. But then I like to not have to worry about it anymore. Like this place is specialized in sugar. But of course, it's, unemployment is pretty doo-doo in this. So we can delete that. It's pretty doo-doo in this. So we'll delete that. Doo-doo in this. Not due to the coffee. So if we get rid of the coffee, we fire a bunch of people. And it already has the max throughput bonus on the sugar, so I think we'll just leave it where it's just auto-expanding the sugar as well. And here we have full employment on the sugar. And not full employment on this stuff. Interesting. Let's see if we got railway problems. If you're having railway problems, I got... I forgot the lyrics, man. I feel bad for you, son. I got 99 problems, but the railroad is also amongst mine. Yep. So did we fail our landing? We did. We could try some place that probably has... Try West Countries here. How did this... Could we know how this battle went. That's a lot of turmoil from Radical Pops, holy hell. We're having some problems, Britain.
can't wait to get some of these territories. Lower Egypt's particularly good. We get the Nile River, which gives agriculture throughput and infrastructure. It would be worth considering moving our capital here, but... Probably should. Kind of don't want to for, like, theme slash RP reasons, but... <clears throat> We have a bunch of excess bureaucracies, so now actually would be a decent time to move the capital. For those of you who don't know, you can move the capital by going in, I think, here. State actions, move capital. Um, so we've incorporated and then move the capital there. Of course, we cannot move capital anywhere. Why does it say? Cannot move the capital when involved in a diplomat play or while at war. Okay, and if we see here, we will see it also has to be incorporated and it has to be... A homeland of your primary culture. Which I suppose is one disadvantage of, uh, if you take a look at our... Okay, I think that's what we were actively researching. No, it's not what we were actively researching. If you take a look at, um, let's see... I want to see cultures. Because it's... Just clicking this will do it. So one advantage, so we slowly convert people to Armenian when we have a particular, when we care, or sorry, if we go into the laws, public schools will convert and assimilate people. And so one reason for perhaps wanting to go public schools is if you knew you wanted to move the capital, um, you could go that. It also provides more, uh, education access until you get this particularly high at which case in which point private schools provides more education access currently doing pretty well on the literacy front i think that ooh, we do have the battle going on ooh, ooh. so this i think is going to let us enforce they of course had a ton of radicals we lose our naval invasion but we can now naval invade here i think and they will be moving guys to the front, so they will not be defending on there. Hopefully, that's the idea. Could also join against uh, Great Britain just by joining Revolutionary Great Britain in order to gain the front. I mean, we could do this. We enforce on Great Britain, right? I'm not sure exactly how it works. Uh, if it prioritizes us enforcing their war goals and then it like puts us at war with Great Britain or something weird like that, or if we just nuke our war own war goals here uh, regarding India. So, dissenters break ranks. Shoot. 90.k is a lot for 5% enactment. We will just take another tick of this at 9% and hope to get lucky. I mean, we've taken a lot of ticks. At this point, we actually are unlucky, and we uh, don't know how to watch our construction queue, I suppose. Clothing is doing quite well overall, it looks like. So we can start, you know, expanding stuff more in this fashion. Where Let's look at where all we have steel. Is it profitable? No. Let's look at where we have power. Profitable? Reasonably so. Are these synthetic plants okay? Yep, they're okay. We'll just add some in cars. The cars doesn't have any peasants. We can also sort by peasants, but we want to focus mainly in incorporated territory. So, but we could go take a look here. We have, ugh, yikes. So you are that. We currently have a infrastructure problem. So we can build two rails here. And that'll solve it, and then we could probably just expand this stuff. That'll be fine. And we can take a look at Basara, which is our next place that has a lot of peasants. We are going to need the sulfur at some point. Let's take a look at your infrastructure, my guy. You've currently got a lot of excess infrastructure. And so we can think about what exactly we want them to specialize in, in terms of their farms. Neither of these are fully employed. Could just leave that alone though and go bink bink on their sulfur mines. And that kind of takes care of all that. Also finishes our queue. 
getting up in there, but let's try and see if we can do a little bit more. These are not particularly, these are not profitable enough to expand. These are profitable enough to expand, and we could put them someplace else. Um, it's expanding everywhere. Let's just add a cheeky five there. These aren't very profitable to expand. These are not profitable to expand. Last works are, so let's just add a little five stack there. Zernum will be profitable on the furniture. Armenia doesn't... Yeah, okay. And let's see. But they definitely have some of those. Okay, so let's take a look at where we have a lot of peasants as well. And try and see if we can expand like the agriculture or the rural stuff there. So we have a ton of peasants here, so we could max expand the livestock ranches, but these aren't very profitable. So why aren't you able to employ? You're paying a ton of animal animal wages, annual wages. Why can't you get uh, workers here? A little bit of a curious thing. There's a lot of migration attraction here, which is partially driven by the Trade Center, which, okay, fair enough. And these are all paying pretty good jobs, but then why don't you want to work here? The average wage is quite high. I'm a little confused. I'm a little flummoxed. Uh, we do have some... We could turn off some labor-saving PMs here. But why are you... Did you have an infrastructure problem that was recently solved? Because you have plenty of infrastructure here. We annexed Egypt. Nice. Uh, yeah, we... I mean, we could just add 10 here, which should be, yeah, I mean, it should be going. Forgot what we researched, because I, my brain cells, um, we researched plastics, because we have a ton of, got it. Yep, that makes sense, that story checks out. Uh, I guess we can go, I mean, I don't hate analytic philosophy here. Uh, we will want to swap over to Trench after we slap around Britain. And now we have a bunch of construction we'll want to do in the mainland anyways. So let's... Oh, somehow we still have fronts. We can raid convoys up in here, though. Oh, you have no supply network. You are just going to get clapped. Um, but we can take a look here, for example, and we can look to incorporate them. That is an expensive Mitabala. The benefit of not incorporating them is uh, the farms would just generally do better. This is a reason for not incorporating, but uh, we're going to have a kind of high population here. I guess we could hold off and decide later, but for now what we could do is we could uh, add a rail, which it will need. We'll add a rail there, which it may or may not need, because there is currently turmoil, so that will uh, affect things a little bit. And we can start expanding some of the rural stuff in here. Specifically the opium, we really want to expand. We don't have opium production except in, like, I think these three states, uh, the Egyptian ones. And so, do we have a lot of... I'm looking for one that doesn't have a lot of anything else but opium, but I guess well, we could just take the opium as it is. Uh, we, of course, increased radicals by a huge amount by just getting a ton more by, you know, this incorporating uh, the rest of them but let's I think we actually want to incorporate here it'll only take us two years because of Armenian culture and this one because of two years because of Armenian culture so these are kind of cheap incorporations so then we will want to put you know some sort of industry here and let's just take a quick look at what is you know gonna give some earnings per week or decent earnings a week I know it said chem plants but that generally is I mean, we're probably going to do the chem plants, but food industries is also okay. Textile mills isn't terrible. Tools is always good. Okay, so we'll just do chem plants here. And we'll just 51 it. Uh, which, of course, is excessive, but, you know, it will we will grow into such things. And we will do here, food industries, I don't hate. And the same philosophy. And then, of course, we will need railways. For both. And that will be our incorporation and a good amount of Q for now. 
and then we can take a look and see who we can pull into our market. These guys, Circassia wants a trade agreement. That's fine, we will do that. I think we might even be able to pull them into our customs union. Nope, not yet. So we have an obligation with Argentina. Can we force them into the union? No, but we can absolve it and boost their relations a little bit. Circassia, we do not have an obligation yet. We have an obligation with Chile, but they are antagonistic, so they won't accept anything. But we can absolve it and become friendly, which is going to take them off antagonistic much faster. Georgia, we already have a customs union. We want to protectorate them, which we can do once we are no longer infamous and also don't have a... What's it called? Truce. Revolutionary Great Britain. So here's the problem. I think that what will happen if we join this is... When we enforce on them, we will just enforce Revolutionary Great Britain's what they want, uh, and we will not enforce what we have declared on Great Britain. But if they're offering an, us an obligation... I'm still going to say no. I just want to enforce our war goals. I don't know exactly how the interaction works. I think we can enforce our war goals here, so we're going to try for it. Now, let's take a look at our market, see what's expensive, and try and do something about it. Can't do much about the ammo. Explosives are real expensive. I guess we'll go our chem plants that are getting built there. Wood's pretty expensive. Let's just check all the PMs, actually, because we changed a whole bunch of stuff. So we'll go electric sewing machines, elastics. Because we, uh, we got a bunch of extra territory from the Egyptians here. Uh, we will be careful. We don't want to put... Yeah, we don't want to put the Egyptian ones on assembly lines, because... Uh, they don't have as much of a labor shortage as we have anyways. And same idea with them on there. So, but we did want to switch over to houseware plastics, I think. Huh, it says we make less money. It does use quite a bit of oil. We actually thought this was going to be a decent PM for us. We might just turn it on in our just Armenia. I guess we don't have too much of a demand for glass. Okay, so we'll just keep that off for now. Uh, tooling workshops. We will switch everything to privately traded, though. And at least rotary valve engine, I think. Well, we'll let Lower Egypt sort its stuff out. We will swap over on these. Do need to have it split. We will do some of that. We probably will delete the shipyards in Lower Egypt, unless they get a bonus to it. Yeah, we could just leave them. That's fine. We will make them produce steamships, though. And military ship building, publicly traded, yippee Um I think we switch them both off of the oil production, the oil use. I guess we want to keep these privately owned to make them profitable enough that we don't run a shortage of military goods ever. That's kind of the goal. Let's turn on arcades everywhere. Let's turn on the lights everywhere. Let's turn on the public motor carriages. Free churches, of course. Do film art everywhere. I think we do want the bougie patronage in general, although it makes the buildings less profitable. We were intentionally trying to turn on, uh, I think, a journal entry. Yeah, we were trying to turn on a journal entry. But it looks like we lost it, or we either got it. So let's turn everything on to bougie patronage, which I know is less profitable, but we're just trying to make the industrialists a little bit stronger. Let's go telephone switchboards. Don't really need it, I guess. Maybe we couldn't, should have not have gone it. And we're gonna swap over all these PMs. Mechanized. I guess we could try and get the next tier of mining that uses oil, the diesel pump. In terms of tech, we are currently researching something, but we're not that deep into it, and I kind of like going and getting the diesel mines, so. I wish the game mechanic could set it so that you would automatically swap everything to this PM. You could click a little box, 
go right here where it says auto swap to these PMs. You know, that would be such a nice quality of life thing. It is such an annoying thing. You, of course, can set those to auto-expand, the rubber to auto-expand, the wood to auto-expand, and all of the mining to auto-expand. That'll be fine. Now we wanted to reevaluate which tech we were going, and we wanted to take a look at... So, compression ignition, eventually, I guess. So, we do have to research a couple tier 4 techs, so we could just go radio. Unfortunately, the industrialists aren't happy with us, so we're not getting the bonus right now. We are trying to pass this outlaw descent. It is quite uncomfortable how this is working out. We would really love to be a righteous government. I forgot. So we have a bunch of new barracks. I think I like keeping some of the lower Egypt ones and actually expanding them a bit. So let's do some of this action. And then we will swap over PMs. And not go to war for a hot minute. We can do field hospitals now that we do have uh, the stuff, the juice, the sauce. We can go destroyers. Where is naval base? Let's get rid of it. Or maybe we expand these. War in the mud gets completed. The entrenched front. We like progress on defense and depth. Oh, we switched PMs. I'm stupid. I thought this war was over. This war is not over yet. <laughs> oh no, I'm stupid. Damn. Alright, I mean, since the PMs are already swapping, we might as well go full swap. Oh, that pain. Can we join this? No, we can't join this anymore. Damn, 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 damn. That sucks. Alright, we're gonna try and land whales at least. This Great Britain's gonna get enforced on though, which will nuke our war, I think, is what. I think that's how this shakes out here. But, well, it looks like they actually, even though we don't occupy the capital, it looks like they are getting a huge negative, and a big part of it is because they're occupied. Does this count their rebellion? Interesting. As occupation. Whoa. We were making a ton, and now we're suddenly not. We have a massive change somewhere. I mean, what's, we could check the price of construction goods, I guess. Explosives are construction goods, so is steel. Steel's not cheap. Hmm. Could we maybe want to incorporate some of these states here? Add some industry. We're just... I'm a little torn because I really do like having the throughput bonus on the opium. I guess maybe we incorporate here because it already has a smattering of industry and we can expand on that, but then we like don't incorporate here because it's just like the furniture manufacturer, just the one thing, you know, and it's not too big a deal. Like this type of thing. Let's set all these on auto expand because that's the only thing they can build probably do that here in Sinai as well. That's already on auto expand. It's already doing its thing. Let's can set this on auto expand. I don't think we want cows here. I think we'd rather have something else. But the cows are so profitable, so like maybe we just leave it. Hmm. Seems fine. We are hemorrhaging money. Alright, let's have a think here. What changed? Expenses went up, it looks like. Okay, goods for government buildings went up. Government wages went up. Goods from... Oh, okay, yeah, we swapped. Goods for military buildings shot up. Stuff needs to readjust a little bit. 
welfare payments are a bit of a thing. Subsidy is a bit of a thing. Defensive pack, diplo packs, a bit of a thing. Interest, a bit of a thing. Okay, okay, fair enough on all fronts. We will take a look and we will quickly go through these. So, Circassia. We can now probably invite to the customs union using the obligation. We can stop bankrolling them. And then. They conquered Alsace Lorraine. From them, I guess. So Cassie accepts. Great Britain is clapping Great Britain here, but we are going to get the landing off. So we will move everyone, or at least let's move the big boys to that front. Oh, did we occupy this? Oh, it looks like we occupied it. Well, that explains why they feel occupied. Yeah. I thought we failed our landing. We did not. We just occupied them fully. This came quite a bit down. Are going to be able to get rid of those, I think, somewhat shortly. Still considering... Uh, let's incorporate here. Because we have a ton of excess bureaucracy, so we can incorporate there, I think. And Great Britain now has very significant problems. If you take a look, you can see... the. Uh, the East, well, how do they start off just automatically in a war? I don't know. But, <sighs> or I guess they were already in a war. That sucks for them, I guess. Tigray secession, come on, brother. Um, but, with Kush here, we're now adjacent to the East India Company. And we can maybe help one of them out. We can help out Great Britain <laughs> against Revolutionary East India Company. I think we just let this... We just deal with whichever one wins and we just don't get ourselves involved. This seems like a fine way to do it. Let's take a look at our market. Small arms are real expensive. So we're going to take a look at the capital and it might just be the case, maybe, 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 that we need more of these. Nope. Can't employ. But here, it can employ. So we'll just expand this a little bit, because they actually will employ. And we do have some amount of, uh, you know, barracks that we're building out here. So this is also a cause of, you know, increasing prices and such. Because we are trying to get ready to, uh, I think we need to pay take Beijing to make this work. Uh, to make our plan work, because I really think we need the legitimacy bonus that Beijing provides. So let's just take a look. Russia might side with them. Let's take a look at Great Xing. I, we're not doing it right now, but we're just taking a look at, you know, kind of... Okay, their GDP is a third of ours, and their military projection is 2600, and ours is... We're really not doing it because we just switched uh, military PMs. Are just quite a bit stronger than theirs, so we could probably land them out. We wish we had a land front with them. Maybe we could convince someone to join. Um, they're not, they're no longer uh, allied with the Shogunate, so the, hopefully the Shogunate stays out of it, I think. I think they're not allied. Oh, they have a defensive back, so we would have to fight the Shogunate. But this might be a good thing for us, because if they stack a whole bunch on this Hokkaido front, then we can actually, you know, get some war in. Let's uh, do some of this action. Baghdad discovers oil. Hot damn. How we drew it up. Crooked connection. So. Oh, God. It's so cursed. We really want this to pass. Wow, this guy's got syphilis, and now he's got colonial administrator. Uh, I 
think we just take the malice one because we are just barely getting the intelligentsia bonus here with propagandists. Happy to be getting the petite bourgeoisie bonus, but it's just a small bonus. But I think maybe we come off this, right? Yeah? Because uh, it is giving us a pretty big malice uh, with the trade unionists. Or actually, the trade unionists. We just I think we stay on it for another tick, but then we might switch to just trying to go regular censorship and try and do it a little bit slower. I mean, we just got the tick. In any case, I think I'm going to call it an episode here. Um, this episode, we annexed Egypt, and so we've expanded our sand quite a bit, expanded our pop quite a bit, and so this is quite nice. We were kind of going to be in recovery slash, you know, switching gears mode for a little bit to uh, kind of make ourselves more ready to this fact because this is a pretty big jump in the size of our, like, uh, overall what's going on. We are incorporating a few states. We're creating industries in a few states. This will be nice once it pops off. It's not popping off quite yet. But um, then we'll expand all the natural resources, kind of figure out where we're specializing stuff and this sorts of thing. Hope you enjoyed. Feel free to like, comment, subscribe, do the YouTube algorithm stuff, and have a good day.